Hello and welcome back to the My Journey podcast, a place where I document my freelance journey. This is once again a solo episode as you'll be able to see if you're watching over on YouTube. If you're listening to the podcast, be aware that this is a YouTube special. So if you want to get the full experience, head over to my YouTube channel at the MJ Social. You should find us there. So this week I thought as this is the place where I document my freelance journey, I would talk about what I've been up to over the last couple of weeks because I've been really busy actually. Like This is the first time in probably the last two, three months that I've felt like maxed out in terms of work. Um, don't get me wrong, I have been busy over the last couple of months, but it's been a nice kind of level, like being able to switch off on an evening, not worry about having to open up the laptop and get some extra stuff done. Whereas this last two weeks, especially this last week, you know, I've been on calls with friends on an evening and been trying to do a little bit of work while I've been on the calls, sitting and watching telly and just doing loads of work. And like, it's what you expect from the freelance life. And so I'm not, I'm not complaining by any stretch of imagination, but I just thought there's quite a lot of different things that have been going on. Like, um, lots of, it's not been all the same stuff. So I just thought I'd kind of talk you through what I've been up to and hopefully you guys find that interesting. Please do let me know um, if that's the case at the MJ Social on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, drop a comment below if you're watching on YouTube. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So, one of the reasons it's been quite busy is a couple of my clients have been looking at doing stuff that maybe isn't normal within the normal monthly schedule for them. So, one client has it's kind of like a project that I'm working on with them, and they've come to the end of that project and they are now launching the research um, that this whole project has been about. So there's a lot of work going on around that and what that entails and extra work in terms of promoting that and liaising with other um, bodies to try and promote that work. So it's a really exciting project. It's been able to work with um, the four local authorities around here, um, Hull, East Riding, North Links and North East Links and the university on that. So it's been good fun um, working with them kind of local governing bodies rather than um, corporate clients for once. Um, but yeah, obviously them launching that is a big thing for them and it's done really well. Um, there's been about three different workshops that they've done so far and it's just been a matter of promoting them, recapping them, working with people who've been involved in them to make sure they've got the content to put out. And yeah, just a really enjoyable experience. And then secondly, another of my clients who I'm, I work with the UK arm of the business, um, but there is a US arm and what they're looking to do is merge them two on social. And what we've had to do is um, been discussions around whether or not that's the right move, um, which we're still waiting for the final decision on that, but it looks like it's going to go ahead and it's just been prepping. It's mainly the Facebook, so it's just been prepping the Facebook ready for that merge because um, I had nothing to do with the US arm of the business on social media so i've been given the responsibility for that and just making sure it's all ready to do a merge between the two profiles which is um it's kind of a new experience for me it's not something i've done before but i um, was aware of it knew how it worked and um, kind of did a bit more research into it and basically you just got to make sure that the facebook pages look as similar as possible so when you submit the request to merge them on facebook facebook knows that it's legitimate and you're not just trying to uh, amass the audience from two random pages into one um, to avoid spam, which is fair enough. Um, but there's been a bit of work going into that, just trying to make sure it's all tidied up and ready to go, really. Um, and then um, some really exciting work. We've got a new client um, potentially coming on board, fingers crossed. Um, I don't really talk about new clients um, in terms of like the work that they're bringing in until I've actually started working with them. Like, I don't count my chickens before they've hatched kind of thing um but yeah it's been a really good experience been working with um, a couple of other um well, another freelance uh, couple of other businesses on that project so it's a big piece of work um with the company to kind of increase their seo their content on site the design of the site and then social media as well and sharing that messaging from the content that we're creating and as a prelim to all of that we've had to create an audit um, and now my audits in the past have been for s much smaller businesses and um, tend to be freebies and um, just like to try and give advice to people and it's been very much um, the shit sandwich approach I think is the way to put it you know here's a couple of things you're doing well but here's something you could improve on right in the middle 
and kind of boosting that person's ego a little bit, trying to make them think they're doing all right, but there are areas that can improve and give them really quick, actionable tips um, in, as part of them audits. And it's basically to showcase my knowledge, um, not to say that this is the work I would do with them, but here's all which I know about this and here's some really useful stuff that they go away, implement that themselves and then they go, wow, that really worked. What else can that can that do for us? Um, whereas this time around, we, we're pretty sure we've got the work, um, but also they're a much bigger client. So it's about talk about what we would do for them. Um, so there were a few little tweaks we'd make on a few of the, on the page and stuff like that that I, I've mentioned, but it was much more about their content strategy and the kind of direction that they're going in and auditing that, um, which was a bit of a change for me when I hear the word social media audit. It was different to how I would produce a social media audit. So it took me a little bit of back and forth with another, mem another member of the team to try and just gauge what they're actually looking for. Um, but once I got it, um, it was a bit of late night work doing it, but you know, it was, it was really interesting, really good. And it's the kind of stuff I would have looked at anyway, but I've never really formalized and put down onto paper. and. Uh, when you come to content strategy, it can be quite hard to write that stuff down. So I have put a massive caveat in there. Like I'd love to discuss these ideas with you because writing your ideas down is great. And also, but you it needs to be succinct on an audit. And the way we were doing it, I just couldn't get into the ideas as much as I'd like. Um, so hopefully they see like the value in the ideas. And then we can have a, bit, a bigger conversation off the back of that and kind of develop them a bit further because I think there's some really good stuff we could be doing with them. Um, and kind of moving the business in the direction that they want to go. There's definitely scope there. And then obviously we get into that time of year, there was a content plan I had to develop for a client, um, but it obviously covers the Christmas period. So um, over the last two weeks, I've done a couple of content plans and it's basically just prepping ahead from my point of view um, to say, well, when's the next content plan due? Because are they going to be around to approve it over the Christmas period? Probably not. So we need to extend them content plans. So we're almost doing one and a half times the work just to extend it a couple of weeks into January, which then means in January, you've got all your content plans landing at one time. So maybe you need to bring it forward and do half a content plan now and just trying to figure all that out. But then actually creating them content plans obviously Christmas is an important time of year for a lot of businesses. Even if it's not, um, I don't really work with like, many B2C brands. Um, so it's mainly about business to business. So it's more about these updates, which I mentioned in episode 42 of the podcast. Um, just keeping people updated. Obviously, Christmas is a crazy time. Uh, it would be even, probably even crazier this year, even weirder. Um, but it's about making sure that you're updating people um, throughout that period to let them know what they can expect from you. So if your offices are shut, tell them that your offices are shut. Remind them that your offices are shut. Pre-warn them that their offices are shut. Tell them that the offices are now open again um, and that kind of stuff. So over that period, so I'm just going to make sure I've got the right information from the client so that when we're planning now for, you know, back end of December, early January, we've got all the information to hand that we require and it's accurate, ready to go ahead with that. Just before I dive into any more, what I've been up to over the last couple of weeks, just a reminder that if you are listening to this podcast and you do enjoy it, make sure to subscribe if that's on the YouTube channel over on Apple Podcasts, so if you're following us on Spotify, wherever it is you're listening or watching, please do subscribe. It really does mean a lot to us and it helps the channel and the podcast, which mean a lot to me. So yeah, that was kind of like the more um, different areas of my service services. You've got like the extra content around the launch, the audit, the merging of the pages, like page admin, and then the content plans, like the kind of things that fit within my core services and you would kind of expect to see from me. But then the other side of what we've been doing this last week, particularly a little bit into the week before, is a lot around um, presentations and workshops and events and that kind of thing. So I've got a presentation coming up this week. So depending on when you listen to this, this is going to be happening on Tuesday the 1st at the university. Um, and that's for the students there and it's all about personal branding. It's a session I've delivered them for them before. Um, it's a good little session. It's about how they can stand out from the graduate crowd, really. Um, there's some tips in there that will be relevant to people outside of the student sphere, but it's, it's predominantly aimed at students to talk about that graduate um, recruitment drive that they will be expecting to be thrown into later in their student career, maybe back end of this year, depending on what year they're in. So, yeah, been 
prepping the content for that because although I've delivered it before it's just making sure it's all up to date relevant statistics relevant examples and just kind of refreshing myself a bit on the flow of the presentation I know the points I want to make but is the flow really there is it kind of does it work and where do I mention all the key points I want to mention so it fits and just refreshing my brain a bit about that so yeah a little bit of work going into that and then another um, workshop that we'll be delivering which I believe is a is, is for C4DI but I believe it's a members only event um, but you will hear about it on my social media so keep an eye out I'll put the full details in there but I, I do believe it is only for C4DI members so if you've got any of them listening make sure to sign up this one's a bit of a new concept it's something I'd spoken about before and I'm doing it in partnership with Tim Goodfellow who's a copywriter go check his stuff out really good newsletter he delivers so if you're um, after some copywriting advice Please do go check him out. It's Tim Goodfellow, Goodfellow Content. So we've had this idea as part of what I did before with Creative Point to deliver a session that takes you from creating ideas, writing a blog, and then sharing it on social media. Um, and that was with the three of us, Courtney, Tim, and myself. And um, we've been asked to do an event in December for C4DI. Unfortunately, Courtney's unable to do it, so it's just me and Tim. So we've kind of we're still doing that full from ideas through to sharing on social media, but we've just kind of streamlined it a bit. I'm almost using it as a proof of concept. Um, so we'll test it out on the C4DI crowd. And if that's something that works, it might be something we offer as a wider um, course or package or event, workshop, whatever it might be, um, as the three of us for Creative Point. But obviously we've got to develop the um, content for that, the, the blurb for it, um, submit it, write all the event details, all that kind of stuff. So there's been quite a bit of work on that. Me and Tim have been uh, had a call back and forth on the message board to try and just like carve out what it is actually we're doing and how, again, that flow. Because nine times out of ten, if a presentation is good content, if it's not delivered in a, in a engaging way, it doesn't matter how good that content is, you're not going to get your message across. So we've just been trying to work out how it best flows and I'm really happy with all that's going. So that'll be on the 9th of December. Um, but like I said, I think it's members only, but you will hear about it on my social media if that's not the case at the MJ social on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And then finally, um, in this little bit of a section, like in terms of events and stuff, I mentioned on the podcast with Tom that there's been more events happening recently and that's continued. One of the events I did mention was Wired Curry, um, which is run by a guy called Les Selby. Um, who live, who's south of the bridge um, and basically it's a space for digi the digital freelancers and business owners to come together and discuss different topics it originally was just a curry night and um, we'd sit around have a couple of drinks and have a curry really nice relaxed evening talk about anything you want but obviously with COVID and what have you we're not meeting up and they've just launched this new kind of strand of events whereby somebody brings almost like a challenge or a problem or an issue to the table and everyone tries and solves that for him. And this week there was a guy who's um, trying to promote his business, having some success on Facebook, but wants to take it to the next level and how can he do that? And a lot of the discussion was around, yes, Facebook might be successful for you, but is it the most successful platform for you? And I had to back that up. I had to say, look, you might be having success on Facebook, but SEO might work even better for you. PPC on Google might work better for you. You need to explore and speak to different people and hear what the different areas can do and then decide before. And I think that's one thing I'm I'm realising is when I'm speaking to some people is that actually this honest approach is the best way to go forward. If you're a freelancer starting out, like don't try and blag it. Don't try and um, lie your way into business because you will get sussed out and you will get found out. And by being open and honest like I am saying, look, yeah, I'm a social media freelancer and I'd love to take your work, but is this the right option for you? You gain much more credibility. You're more likely to get their recommendations and end up with better clients in the long run. And if people do start working with you, you know they're there for the right reason. They're probably there for the long haul. So yeah, another great event. And there's plenty more stuff coming up. Um, I've got an event tomorrow morning on Monday, um, which is like a big international um, workshop by some business leader. It was going for free, so I'm jumping on that there's a couple of networking kind of things coming up in the next few weeks so yeah it is good to see the, the online events happening again and as somebody who's worked from home most of the time i've not really seen many people 
Um, and actually, I found that when everyone was able to go back to the office and stuff like that, and I decided to stay at home, um, a lot of them online events kind of stopped happening and you stopped seeing them, um, which made it hard for me to kind of generate new business to a certain extent. Um, but now that happened again, it's much better and giving me an opportunity to meet new people and speak to new people, which is absolutely great. Just a quick reminder, if you enjoy this podcast, whether that's on YouTube or on audio, wherever you get your podcast from, one little thing you can do to really help me out, and I'd much appreciate it, is share it with a friend. If everyone who's listening, just share it with one friend. Obviously, that doubles our audience, which is absolutely huge. So yeah, that would be great. If you do enjoy this, please do share it with a friend. So finally, just kind of rounding up what I've been up to over the last week, couple of weeks, is obviously I mentioned on the last podcast, I believe it was, free consultations. A few people have taken me up on that. It's been really good to speak to different people, mainly small businesses who can't afford my services, which is, some people think maybe hearing that, well, why are you doing it? But I actually really enjoy it. It's a good chance to speak to them. And if they grow, if, if I can give them advice and it helps them and they grow, then hopefully they'll come to me in the future. Or if they know somebody who needs social media support, they'll recommend myself. So it's a bit of a brand building exercise, but it's also great just to, I love just creating ideas and talking about ideas. Um, and that gives me the opportunity to do that. So I've really enjoyed doing that. Obviously, if you do want to take me up on that offer of a free consultation, just drop me a message and we'll get one booked in 30 minutes. Ask any questions you want about social media, even wider marketing. I'm happy to help with that. And um, hopefully it can be of use to you. And then on top of that, all the fun stuff about being a freelancer, all the usual admin, chasing proposals to potential clients, um, chasing invoices, Creating invoices is quite good when you kind of start talking about how much you're going to be paid, but chasing invoices that are late or there's been issues with or whatever. Now, I'm really lucky. I work with a load of clients who are absolutely great. I know they're going to pay me, but every now and then there's just something that gets missed and um, you have to chase it up, resend it, chase it with their finance team or whatever. Um, and you know it's coming, which is absolutely fine, but it just, when you've got a busy week, it's the last thing you want to be doing is little bits like that. Um, and then obviously there's all my own content. There's recording the podcast here on the weekend, um, doing the YouTube channel. Um, what else have we got? The newsletter went out recently, so pulling that all together. But I enjoyed that though because it kind of made some more tweaks to it, and hopefully it's a lot more um, engaging, full of more content for people who read it. And uh, yeah, really happy with that. But yeah, it's just been a crazy couple of weeks, and I thought I talk about this place being a place where I document my journey. And I've never, I don't think I've really ever given you an insight into what a, a week looks like for me. And yeah, this week's been a bit busy, a bit different. But I just thought I'd share it with you. Let me know if you've enjoyed that. Um, you might think, bloody hell, I don't want to hear about what you've been up to. Um, got my own problems. But if you have enjoyed it, I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't, let me know too. Because um, I don't want to do this again and see the listeners drop down. But yeah, if you can like this video, if you watch on YouTube or leave a, um, a review if you listen to a podcast somewhere else, drop a comment below on YouTube, whatever it is you can do. Just engage with this. It would mean the absolute world. But until next time, thanks for watching.